Um, what are we looking for this underneath to be? What? Negative 1, right? Because we know that the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. Was everybody able to remember that much? Okay, so there's two different ways to solve this. You can look underneath and say, okay, I need the underneath here to be negative 1. So what value of y would make this negative 1? Or you can simply go about it algebraically. So how many of you, just curious, went about it algebraically? Just Tyler? The rest of you just thought about it? Okay, awesome. Okay, so if you just thought about it, how did you think it through? Talk me through this. Okay, you just said it to your group. So talk me through this. People just shout out. What did you think through? How did you think through it? So we'll go with Tyler's way. So you said you not square rooted, because the square root and square root. No, what'd you do? Squared. You squared, so you're solving for y. So you squared both sides of the equation. So then on the left, my root canceled out with my power, leaving me with negative 2 minus y is equal to i squared. What is i squared? Negative 1. Negative 1. So we have negative 2 minus y is really equal to negative 1. Does everybody understand how Tyler's going about solving this algebraically? Not a bad idea. Okay, so then from there, we'll solve for y. So what will we do? Add 2 to both sides of the equation. So we have negative y is equal to 1. And then to get y completely alone, we'll divide by? So we have y is equal to negative 1. How many got that answer? Awesome. So I heard some of you, even though you wouldn't speak up, I heard you talking to your groups and saying, well, I thought about it. What value of y would make that negative, I mean, would make that negative 1? And I see that if I subtract negative 1 from negative 2, that would be negative 1, right? So if you plug in a negative 1 right there, that would be negative 2 minus negative 1, which is negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. So we'd have the square root of negative 1. So the value that made it true was a negative 1. So that's how others, the other majority of you thought through it. Both ways are great. Algebraically, you know you can, you're, you're not going to get it wrong because um, you've done algebra here. Okay. Good. Questions on that one? Okay, so let's get going with what we're doing today. So today we have, we've learned everything that we're doing today. We've already learned it. Um, we just have to be able to apply function operations seen in different ways. So you're not always going to be given an equation. Sometimes you're going to be given different things, and you have to be able to use that information to get an equation so that you can perform the function operation. So remember, on this upcoming text, there's going to be these five function operations. Now there's addition. Now I have people asking me, I guess they weren't paying a really good attention on notation. So everybody looking up here. If we have f plus g of x, that means we just have a function f, we have a function g. We're adding function f and g, and they're both functions of x, right? People kept asking me, well, what do you do with that x? Do you multiply it in? Well, guys, yeah, this is just notation. We know that this just means we have a function f of x plus g of x, right, everybody? We're not going to be multiplying x anyway. Okay, so then f minus g of x. We like to rewrite it. That just means we have a function f minus a function g. They're both functions of x. So we can rewrite this as f of x minus g of x. And then this is the one that we have to put a little red flag by um, to ourselves and our minds because subtraction is really tricky. We have to make sure we're distributing when necessary. And then f times g of x, that's just f of x times g of x. And then this one kind of has a red flag as well because we, when multiplying, don't we always have to use parentheses and then possibly distribute, right? And then we have f divided by g of x. On, in secondary two, this is probably the easiest one because you simply take f of x divided by g of x. There's really not going to be simplification needed on that. Next year, you will have every single one of your function operations that's division. Pretty much, you'll have to be able to simplify. Um, and how you'll do that, just so you know, you'll factor the top, factor the bottom, and divide out common factors. So we actually could do that, because we know how to factor, right? But we don't expect you to do that in secondary two. And actually, I've been looking and watching, and I haven't seen any that do simplify. So, anyways. So f o g of x, f o g of x. Really, that says f composed of g of x, right? That's how we say that. f composed of g of x. And we know we like to rewrite it in this format a little bit better because then it's pretty easy to see what we're doing. So remember, this is the one where we take x, push it back in with g, plus g of x. We take it, push it back in one more time, so that's f of g of x. So then we know, just like if we had f of 2, 
we would substitute 2 in for f. Well, we have f of g of x, so we substitute in function g of x into function f wherever there's an x, right? Okay, questions on that? Okay, let's just do a couple examples. The lesson's going to go pretty quick, then I'll just let you practice. Okay, here we go. So f of x, g of x, let's find g minus f of x. So first of all, in this notation, isn't that just g of x minus f of x? Okay, g of x is what? 2x minus 1, right? Everybody. Yes. And then we're subtracting f of x. Subtraction always needs parentheses. So f of x is 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. So we're taking this function, subtract all this stuff. So that's why we've got to distribute our negative sign through to all this stuff. So we have a negative 1, so we're going to change our signs. So negative 3x squared, am I correct? Minus 2x, and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, right, everybody? Now, this test has probably a lower percentage rate because people make little errors on, like, multiple, like subtracting and multiplying out negatives. So don't be that person. Because if you know what you're doing, it's a bummer to miss it. And it, it, like it, you always get super upset with yourself when you miss it, but you really know what you're doing. Okay, so then we can just drop down these front terms, right? Because we're not changing the sign on these because there wasn't a negative sign in front of these. So we have a 2x minus 1. Then from there, it's just combining like terms. I'm putting it in standard form. So I always start with the highest degree and work my way down. So I'm going to start with negative 3x squared. Do you see any other x squareds we can combine with that? No. So I cross it out so I don't miss anything. Positive 2x minus 2x is? Zero. Zero x's. So we won't write zero x's. And then negative 1 plus 1 is? Zero. Zero. So we have a plus zero x plus zero. We wouldn't write that because we know zero times anything is just zero. Questions on that? Okay, let's do f composed of g of x. So we would need to rewrite this so we know which fu function we're composing of the other function because it could go either way. So we rewrite it by taking x, squishing it back in with g on this one. That would be g of x. Squishing it back in one more time, back into f. So we're doing f of g of x. Now we always substitute the inside of the parentheses, that one, into the other function. So I locate g of x. I'm going to circle it. Because that's what I'm substituting in is g of x, right, everybody? We substitute that in for f wherever there's an x. So look, right there. But isn't there another substitution that needs to be made? Right there. So we would have 3 times 2x minus 1 squared. Does everybody see how I'm replacing x with 2x minus 1? And then we have plus 2 times, instead of x, it's replaced with 2x minus 1. And then we have our minus 1 from here. Then we would simplify that. I'm not going to take the time to do that. Okay? You would simplify, though. We would know how? Okay. That's a pretty long one. Okay. So looking at this one, we're simply asked to find f times g of x. So we're finding f of x times g of x. We'll look at our functions. Are we going to be able to do this without an equation? No, right? We need an equation. Do we know how to find the equation given points? Do we know how to find the equation given points? Yes. Um, our calculator has been pretty much doing it for us. So we've got to figure this out. And actually on the end level test, I promise every single one of you will get a problem like this and exactly like this. So you'll have to say, okay, I need the equation. So go. Tell me what is this equation? So first of all, it's a line, right? That is something you're going to have to know. This is a line. Now you can do this two different ways. You can either know exactly what the equation of a line looks like, or you can just type it into your calculator. So with lines, I mean, at least find a couple points. So what are some points on here? Let's find some whole number points. Over 0, up. 0, 3, what's another point? Let's see, over 1, no, over 2, up 2, right? There's another one. Does everybody see how I'm finding points on here? And then I'm going to do one more just to be safe, over 4, up 1. So go, type in your calculator. You'll go to stat. You guys should have this down by now. Stat into edit. And then in list 1, you type in your x values. In list 2, you type in your y values. And then you'll go to stat, calculate, and then over to lin down to linear regression line, right? So tell me what is this equation of this line? So did you get y is equal to negative 1 half x, right, plus 3? So did everybody get that? 
which let's look at our line. That does make sense. What's our y-intercept? Three. What's our slope? Rise over run, right? Isn't it a negative slope? So you go down one over to the right two, right? Rise over run. So negative one over, over two. Does that make sense, everybody? So our equation makes sense. Okay, let's find the equation to this parabola, which is which is also called a what? Not line, not line. It's not a line. What is it? Quadratic. So we'll be doing quadratic regression line. So let's look at some points on here. So some points are over zero up three, over over two negative one. That's a good one. And let's do over one up two. You could even use a couple more. So, I mean, the more the better. So, over negative 2 up, not negative, sorry, negative 2 down 1, right? Yeah, everybody? So, let's get that quadratic regression line. Go, calculator, go. That's right. Good. So, you, if you type it in your calculator, right, and make sure your x, y points match up, you should have got the quadratic of y is equal to a is negative 1, so that's negative 1 or negative 1, x squared, right? And then plus 0x, right? Would we need to write that? No. And then plus, and then c is 3, so plus 3. Okay, so we have these two equations. And now we can finally, it took us a minute, but now we can finally, finally go through and do f, f of x times g of x. So f of x was this. So we're doing negative 1 half x plus 3 times g of x, which is negative x squared plus 3, right? Are we all good with this? Did we all get that? You're being really quiet. Okay, so then we would distribute. So help me out here. Negative a half x times negative x squared. Positive a half x what? Cubed. Is everybody comfortable with that? And then negative a half x times positive three. So if you don't know, type in your calculator, what is negative 0.5 times 3? So minus 1.5x, good. And then 3 times negative x squared is negative 3x squared. And then positive 3 times positive 3 is plus 9. So then we'll combine like terms. So we don't have any like terms in this one, do we? So let's just put it in standard form. A half x cubed, and then it would be minus 3x squared minus 1.5x plus 9. There's our f times g of x. Questions on that? Are we all good? Do I need to do another one? Probably not, because I think we know function operations. So I'm not going to do any more. So ready, set, go. Before I let you finish up, um, there's just a couple examples here. So let's remember how to find the inverse of a function. What are the steps? What do I do first? Quick. Six, switch x and y. So in this equation, we have x is equal to 5y minus 2, right? Then don't we just solve for y? Add 2 to both sides. So we have x plus 2 is equal to 5y. Then divide by 5. So we have x plus 2 over 5 is equal to y. So therefore, that would be our inverse function. y is now solved for. We have a function y equals something. So there's our inverse function, right, everybody? Okay, so... This one, you switch x and y, same thing. So we have x is equal to 3y squared plus 7. So we're solving for y. So we subtract 7 from both sides. x minus 7 is equal to 3y squared. Before we square root it, we would divide by 3. So we have x minus 7 all over 3 is equal to y squared. And now we'll take the square root because that one does the square. And then we have... The square root of x minus 7 over 3 is equal to y, so y is now alone, so that's our inverse. So just a reminder, do we need to do one with fractions to remind ourselves? Are we good with those from yesterday? One with fractions or we're good? Do one. Okay, so we are asked to find the inverse, so we switch x and y. So we have x is equal to 2y squared plus 1 divided by negative 3. So first of all, um, to get y alone, the first thing we would do is it's all divided by negative 3. So we multiply both sides by negative 3. So we'll have negative 3, x is equal to, those divide out become 1, 2y squared plus 1. So then we would subtract 1, 
negative 3x minus 1 is equal to 2y squared. Quite an advanced one. This takes a lot of steps. Then we would divide by 2. And then we have negative 3x minus 1 divided by 2 is equal to y squared. And then we would square root both sides of the equation. So we'd have the square root of negative 3x minus 1 all over 2 is equal to y. So that's our inverse now that y is alone. Do you need to see this one? Are you okay with cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, millionth roots, whatever? We're good with this one? Okay, I won't do it then. Okay, so let's just look through this one. Let's think through it together really quick. You'll want this example. So it says, write a function operation that makes 2x a solution. We're writing a function operation. Function operations, aren't there a million function op? Well, there's five function operations, right? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, or function composition. So guys, okay, your answer might be different than mine. So it says write a function operation that makes 2x a solution. Let's, I'll show you one that I think of right off the bat. It's pretty easy. If I have, if I said f of x is equal to 2, and I say g of x is equal to x, isn't, to get a solution of 2x, wouldn't I just have to do f times g of x? So I made up a problem, because that would be 2 times x, which is 2x. So I made up a problem to make this a true statement. Does that make sense, everybody? Now, there's others I could have done. Let's think about it. Let's say, so new, starting back over, let's come up with another function operation that makes 2x a solution. What if I said, okay, f of x is equal to um, 4x, and g of x is equal to 2x. I'm just giving myself some things because I'm thinking about, oh yeah, I could see how I can make it 2x. Couldn't I go f minus g of x? Wouldn't that be a solution, 2x? Yeah? 4x minus 2x is equal to 2x. So I got the solution, so your answer should be different. So think about those guys, come up with your own, be creative. Okay, the more advanced, the better. Good for you. So then it says write a function that makes 4 a solution. So I'm like, okay, let's see. I could do, hmm, what can I do? F of x is equal to, let's come up with a good one, x. And let's say g of x is equal to x squared. And I say, okay, a function that would make for us, a function operation that would make for a solution. So wouldn't f, sorry, wouldn't, so this one I'm making a little bit more advanced. g of f of 2 make this a true statement. Well, let's see. What's f of 2? What's f of 2? Nope. What's f of 2? Remember how we do this, guys. It's not 2x. What is it? 2. two. So then if I plug that 2 into g, what's 2 squared? 4. So do you see how I came up with a way to get this solution? Everybody good with that? Okay. Awesome. Okay, so you should now be able to finish the worksheet. Be creative on those problems. Ready, set, go.